Agricultural Economics and Agribusiness, University of Ghana. She teaches and supports both undergraduates and graduate students in the university. She had a PhD from Kansas State University in the United States of America. She had her master's degree from the University of Bonn, Germany, and her bachelor's degree from the premier university, University of Ghana. She is the sister's coordinator for the campus fellowship, Valley View University. Please give a resounding applause as we welcome Dr. Abigail Ampoma Adaku. God bless you. Pastors and sister, God bless you. You are welcome. Yes. So I want to let you know that you can ask questions on the seminars. You can ask questions on the excellentia we have just had. You can also ask general questions. And with the spirits leading, they will give suitable answers to all your questions. So we would like to take the questions at this time. I can see a lot of people out there. Um, so on my right hand side, yes, we will take the first question. Our technical man. So like I announced earlier, if you have questions, just come to the front row. Don't be in the stands, come to the front row so that you can be identified, you can be located easily and given the opportunity to ask your question. Yes, so we can take the first question. Yes, so um, we would want the rest of you two who have questions um, to please walk to the front here so that the camera can capture you. Yes, so wherever you are, just um, walk to the front here very quickly as we take the first question. So as we take the question and the answer, wherever you are with questions, walk to the front here. We'll appreciate that. Yes, let's take the first question. Thank you very much. My name is Samuel, and this is my question. The one who took the Excellentia session told us that we should have our own standards, and we shouldn't compare ourselves with others. So my question is that, for example, if you're a student and the pass grade is 80%, if you set your own standard to be 50%, you would be failing. So how do you set your own personal standards and also ensure that you are not failing? Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Well, thank you very much for this question. Uh, you can set your standards even lower than the standards others are setting for themselves and what has been set in the institution. What we are saying here is that you are not just aiming at becoming first in class because you can have 60% and you'll be the top student, but that may be below your potential. So a success, a growth mindset is the one whose definition of success is not defined by other people. Set higher goals. We talk about ambitious and exciting goal. The one that will get you to the very top. So definitely, if uh, the pass mark is 80, you are not looking at just becoming the top of the class, but even exceeding the mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Set higher goals. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is John Baptist. Uh, my question is that 
question where can you ask lamentation chapter lamentation chapter 5 verse 16 or say an about three a out of form yen ara yen we na ya ya bonne amen uh the question ne say uh a radi mea a radi asa mea ta say yen about three a out of form na yen a yen we a who say about you know you're not done prayer soon at all for now so yeah you generally see you for yeah yeah this year hey who said that one a adult so when you see you're seeing in our and for school i have for one a door so now a brian so your first say i would try christo at the amayen yes a piece of crown crime band so and i you free a bit to me i feel i'm good free now yeah yeah the money i'm a Christu, a word in my end, and my bunu. Ah, yen brain so per se, or dear ye, a jumakes ye, a ye brain bunu. We name a question. Maybe if uh, you had the question, he spoke in three, could you help translate? Okay, so let's take the next question we want to take a number of questions and the panel will take time to address them one after the other need power try the number one longest lasting double-a battery energizer ultimate lithium praise, praise yeah. the lord Hallelujah. my name is Dougie paul Gosui. Okay. speak a little louder my name is Dougie paul Gosui, and my question is during our seminar the teachers taught us that God does not allow or want us to suffer and want us to be successful in this life. But our iniquity and our sins is preventing us from becoming successful in life. And when we look at our world today, many youth, many young adults, many great people are making it out there. They are not even saved. They are not born again. But they are able to make it and are successful and are dominating the world. But some other people in the same category, I mean, those people are not yet saved and are in sin, but they are not able to be successful or even progress. And in another category, there are so many people who are born again, who are saved, but the same people are not able to be successful and even to progress. So my question is, do God execute the standard of God or the standard of the word of God to certain people and ignore the other people okay thank you very much for that question so let's make our questions a brief so there could be more time for the answers yes next question um please i'm gk reagan and my question is as a young rising um, man who want to enter or who is called into the ministry as we know that we are all hoping to get to the upward height um, can that young man called into the ministry also know that um, the world is corrupt and therefore we the Christians who are called by God are supposed to um, take away that corruption. Can we enter into the place of politics as a young ministers of the gospel? Can we mix the ministry with politics in order to achieve that higher height? Okay, thank you very much for your question. Let's take the next question. Pastor, please, good morning. Yes. Pastor, please, he said that, he said that we should set goals for ourselves. If our goals do not align to the will of God, sh what should we do? Thank you very much. Your question will be answered. Let's take the next question. Yes. I'm Daka Ishmael. During the seminary, our teacher taught us that in, in the beginning, God said that, let us create man as our own image. So I want to ask, who was with God so that he was talking to him that, let us create man as our own image. Thank you. Thank you for that question. It will be addressed. So let's take... Uh, the last one, and then, yes. So if we have a sister there, let's take the sister. If we have a sister there, let's take the sister. We'll go around, but let's take the sister at this time. All right, thank you. 
My name is Elizabeth Atta. Please, the question I want to ask is, if I try all that I could, but it couldn't work or it didn't happen, please, is there a timetable or deadline for my goals? And if also I've set an unrealistic dead goal, does it mean I'm a failure? Please, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, let the patient, the panel will take time to address these sets of questions, and then we will move on to the next set of questions. Okay, so, um, Pastor Dr. Francis Nsia, um, so you address um, the question our brother asked. He said, um, he was taught that we God made us to succeed, but our iniquities are preventing us from succeeding. But he knows others who are not Christians and are succeeding. How do you explain that? Thank you very much. Um, we need to look at it. If you're a child of God, the world is not your standard. God's word is your standard. And one thing is that there are successes that do not endure with time, passage of time. And what you want to have enduring success, it should be one without cutting corners and then looking at what the world is doing. And so the world may succeed in their own circle, but you as a child of God, you can't go on that tangent. And once you stay with God, you are in the majority and you definitely succeed. Do away with iniquity and look to God and he will prosper. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, so our pastor, as he has said, the standard of God is for us as children of God. And what others in the world will see as success in the light of God may not be success. If you lie your way through to success, God doesn't see that as success. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, Pastor Samson Chi, you will take the next question. Can a Christian combine ministry with politics ministry as we know per the scripture is geared towards the salvation of souls and every christian has that mandate so whoever is born again is number one a minister and the minister is a representative of god now you champion the cause of god geared towards the salvation of souls and if you want to succeed in this ministry, you depend on God. God is the author of salvation. And as you go unto the Lord in prayer, he will guide you. Now, when we come to the issue on politics, politics has nothing to do with the salvation of souls. And if you want to excel in ministry, I don't think joining politics as a secondary issue or what we call it an oversight responsibility as a minister wouldn't augur well it will go contrary to the message you are preaching bringing souls into the kingdom so in, a, in summary you are to focus on what god has entrusted in your hands by praying waiting on him and leave the politicians to do their own work by championing the cause of the world but not the cause of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so Dr. Abigail Adaku, um, what should we do if our goals do not align with the word of God? Thank you for that question. So if our goals do not align with the word of God, and as your question has, as your question goes, it means that you know for sure that the goal does not align with the word of God. And once you know that, it means that you cannot proceed with that kind of goal. The reason is that sometimes when we read the Bible, we see that how it goes, it says, and God was with him. Once you know that the goal is not aligned with the word of God, it means God will not be with you wherever you are going. 
and pursuing goals is always not a straight road. It comes with hurdles, it comes with difficulties, and when the, the going becomes tough, you will not have, you cannot pray to God because you know that it is not aligned to his word. So if you know it doesn't align to his word, you don't have to pursue that goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, uh, Professor Chasamwati, um, one person asked, who was there when God was creating the world? For which reason he said, let us. Okay, so the Bible says in the beginning was the word, that is Jesus Christ. Um, so the Trinity has always existed. And by the Trinity, we mean God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so the Trinity was there at the time when, the, when man was being created. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, so Dr. Francis is here. Um, someone asked, what can I do if I have done everything to achieve my goals? but haven't realized them. Do the goals have expiry dates? Well, they, they don't. Um, here, what the questioner needs is perseverance. Um, every step you take, the, as my sister said, there are hurdles, there are obstacles on the way. But if you take mistakes as manure, we are told failure becomes fertilizer. So you have to persevere. You press toward the mark, as we heard from the excellential speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK. So we want to take the next set of questions. Yes, yeah, so let's be brief with our questions for the sake of time. Praise the Lord. My Hallelujah. name is Confidence, and uh, the speech our uh, daddy gave six winner principles. The first one on the list is work with purpose. I want to ask, first of all, if you identify your purpose, it's a great achievement. So I want to ask, can he help us? or the process that we can identify our purpose so that we can achieve them in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Let's take the next question. Thank you so much, Pastor. This question is very, very important to me because I grew up from a hostile environment. My name is Dr. Kweglo Andelba Vitus. I am a resident optometrist at Mother of God Hospital, Ashaima. So, my question is, how can a very, very poor person succeed? Because actually, I grew up from a hostile environment. How can my, my brother, who is my uncle's son, who is in a remote village, never exposed to such things that we are exposed to? How can he make it in life? Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Your question will be addressed. Next person. Please, my name is Praise Esther. I'm from Gorso, region. I pursue IT at Amstead. And my question is, it's related to what our brother just asked, that if somebody is poor, and for instance, you want to pursue a course at the university, which its school fees is very high. So let's say, for instance, engineering, and your parents couldn't afford. As a prof, they were, um, they were introducing our prof, they said he pursued an engineering course as a uh, master's. And as you, you wanted to pursue the so engineering for the, course, time, the first degree, if you go and you pursue your second degree engineering course, are you automatically an engineer, or is it that you have to do additional courses before you be an engineer? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's take the next question. My name is Wisdom Kennedy Atta. I'm from Takrade. And my question is, if I'm living in an area where I've been able to set a business, and I have other rival businesses around me. If by God's grace, I come for a program like this, I've been able to learn a lot, and I've been able to inculcate it in my business, for my business to boom or go higher. 
if by chance these rival businesses come to me for advice on how to make their own succeed or go higher as my own is going, is it advisable for me to teach them all these things, knowing very well that if I show them, they may either overtake me or be at the same level with me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The last one for this session. Thank you very much yes. for the opportunity. My name is Jacob Agongo. Um, our pastor talked goal setting. Um, my question is this. Uh, assuming you want to be a, a medical doctor, but the results you have, or maybe your qualifications, would not permit you to go into the field of medicine. So what do you advise I should do? Or do I need to change um, a field, or what do I do? Then my second question is this. Um, in the book of Exodus okay, so chapter... one question for each person. You will let another person ask a question, and then probably your other questions will be addressed. Yes. Okay. Please, I'm NKS Mensa. Okay. And my question is, I pursued medicine at the university. Then I went for training to be a medical doctor for seven years. Then I failed, and I tried again. Then I succeeded for the second time. Then uh, the calling of God came upon me to become a pastor. My question is, should I continue to educate myself to have masters in my profession, or I should just quit and go and do the work of God? OK, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. So the panel will address these set of questions, and then uh, we will make progress. So I will repeat the questions briefly, and then any member of the panel can pick on the question and address it. So the first one for this session says, um, can you help me identify, know how to identify my purpose? All right, thank you very much. Um, I made a statement during the session that the starting point of successful achievement is to know yourself. And the starting point of knowing yourself is to know God. Um, we are all endowed with different talents, different skills, different levels of intelligence and capabilities. You need to discover what God has put within you. And if you read um, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So God has destined you to succeed in specific areas. I think one of the things you should do is seeking the face of God in prayer for God to direct you. The steps of a good man, they are always ordered by the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. So... The next question, how can a very, very poor person succeed? The Bible talks about the fact that he knows that Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, God says he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, thoughts of peace, to give us an expected end. So the first thing that poor person should know is to surrender his or her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then once he becomes a child of God, he's now aligned with the purpose of God. And God himself will direct his steps, his steps to realize a blissful future. Moreover, I think that poor person could be directed to some of the scholarship opportunities some uh, non-governmental organizations and even governmental institutes are offering and we could probably help the person assess these resources that could help him sponsor his or her education. So that poor person should never underestimate himself, except understand that God has a special purpose for him, and God will coach him to his destined success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So another person also asked, what does it take to be an engineer? Is it that when you do a first degree in a different uh, course area and a master's in engineering, you have become an engineer? What does it take to be an engineer? 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, I will respond today because I'm also an engineer. All right, so uh, for those of you in the, uh, the JHS level, the junior high school, uh, to be an engineer, you have to make sure you do science. You must do science. And the science, you need to do physics, chemistry, uh, and mathematics at least. You can add biology. But biology is not a requirement if you want to do science. Uh, but make sure you have physics, you have chemistry, uh, and then uh, you have additional mathematics, what we call elective mathematics. Um, you can, there's various areas of engineering. Okay, we have um, the traditional ones, civil engineering, mechanical, electronic, uh, electricals. Uh, we have geodetic engineering. Um, we also have the new emerging areas of engineering like uh, biomedical engineering, food process engineering, um, and so on and so forth, agricultural engineering. So these are areas you can offer. Um, you can take them up at the, any of the universities. Those of you in Ghana, uh, the University of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Uh, we also have other universities, including private universities, that offer these programs. Uh, it's usually very competitive. So if you are going with a WASI result, then you must aim at getting a single digit. I mean, um, anything up to aggregate nine, aggregate 10, uh, depending on the option you want to take. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you. Um, so the next one says, um, should I share my business secrets with my competitors? Okay. Okay, thank you. So from the business perspective, uh, we actually teach that you have to obscure um, your value innovation. So um, if someone comes to you and then they want to know what you are doing, unless you want to do a, a joint venture with a person, or you want, you want to work together, otherwise from the business perspective, we actually show the process. You know, in, in competition, people will want to imitate what another person is doing. And the trend we are moving to is going to areas where you make the competition irrelevant. So if someone wants to know what you are doing to stand out, then the person wants to do a joint venture with you. Otherwise, uh, it is not advisable from the business perspective. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, this one also says, uh, if I try an area of education and I seem to fail, should I change my field or continue to persist in the same area? Thank you very much. If we keep on doing the same thing over and over, we shouldn't expect to see any new results. One thing is that we usually fail to know who we are. First, discover yourself. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Or you do what we call SWOT analysis to make sure that this area maybe mathematics might not be but you can put in effort to change, but if things are not working, it stands to reason that there is a need to change and then see what you can do. And in all this, you need to go for counseling and talk to people who will be able to help you to make that change. Okay, thank you very much. Um, time is not on our side, but I believe that this section has been very exciting this session has been very intriguing, and it is worth the time. Um, those of you who still have questions, the panel members are not gone. We still have the opportunity to ask the questions, and I'm very sure that the rest of the program will also address your questions. So thank you very much. We shall bring the question and answer time to an end for the sake of time so that we move on to the next activity. Panel members, we are very grateful for all the wisdom you have shared with us and for all the knowledge you have freely given to us. And we say, God bless you. Let's please give a round of applause to our panel members as they leave the podium. God bless you. I think you can do better than that. 
I think you have not given your loudest clap yet. I think you have more strength for a louder clap. Now give a clap offering unto the Lord. You can't give the same clap offering unto the Lord. God deserves better. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping as the choir take their position. Keep clapping as the choir take their position to lead us into impact praise. Praise the Lord with all your heart. And praise the Lord from the depth of your heart. And the desires of your heart will be granted by the Lord in Jesus' name. Shout a big amen. Shout a bigger amen. Shout the loudest amen. The choir shall take over now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Impact, let me hear you. Hallelujah. I can't hear you, young people. You are energetic. Hallelujah. We are going to give God the biggest, loudest, hottest impact praise ever. Hallelujah. And so we are going to enter into his courts with thanksgiving, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It is good to give praise unto the Lord. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. And so let the young people all around the world and in this stadium rise up to their feet. Even as we come before the Lord to give him praise, to sing songs of joy and happiness, lifting up our voices and our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. your hands together.
saints of low, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, praise the Lord, everybody say, bless the redeemed of the Lord, say so. I am glad to announce to you that the convener of GCK and Impact Ghana with mommy are here and with a resounding applause, a standing ovation, let us acknowledge the presence of Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoye. You can do better than this. can do better than this. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have your seats. We move into the moment of variety. Hello, la. 
lovely people. This is the Impact Morning Show, your life on DLTV and on all our social media handles right from our studio at the Accra Sports Stadium, Ghana. It is a beautiful Saturday morning. I am Christabel Owusu, and with me in the studio is... And as usual, we bring to your doorstep interesting content that would impact your life for a better future. And today is nothing different. We have prepared three engaging and educative content to sell you our viewers. But before that, let's go on a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back viewers and thank you for staying tuned once again. This is the Impact Morning Show. So Christabel, today is the third day of the Ghana edition of the Global Crusade and already we are hearing mind-blowing testimonies and overwhelming stories. Let's just hope today isn't anything different. Yes, I know our viewers today have great expectations for today's session and I strongly believe they would not be disappointed. Certainly not. And so viewers, without much ado, we'd want to quickly launch into the varieties we have for this morning. And so the first on the list is... Who is Jesus? There's this young gentleman who is here to tell us who Jesus is from each book of the Bible. Shall we, viewers, with a round of applause, welcome Stephen Osei Owusu. Let's talk about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the glory of the only begotten of the Father. This Word is immortal and eternal. And throughout, even before His incarnation in the womb of the Virgin Mary, He had been with us all through time. And in every book of the Bible, He's presented uniquely to us. Because in the book of Genesis, Jesus is seen as the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the great high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud and fire by day and by night. In Deuteronomy, Jesus is the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he is the commander of the Lord's army. In Judges, he is our great judge and lawgiver. And in Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, Jesus Christ is the seed of David. And in Kings and Chronicles, he is the great king whose kingdom has no end. His term never expires. In Ezra, he is our faithful scribe. And in Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of the broken down walls and everything that is broken down in your life. In Esther, like Mordecai, Jesus is our advocate. And in Job, he is our redeemer that ever liveth. On another last day, I shall see him. Hallelujah. And in Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus is my refuge and my fortress. In Proverbs, he is the wisdom of God higher than that of Solomon. And in Ecclesiastes, he gives us the meaning for life. He is our true meaning for life. And in Songs of Solomon, Jesus is the loving bridegroom. And in Isaiah, he is the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. In Jeremiah and Lamentations, Jesus is the weeping prophet. And in Ezekiel, he is the four-faced man, the Lord full of glory. And in Daniel, he's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, Jesus is the faithful husband. In Joel, he's the outpourer of the Holy Spirit. And in Amos, he's our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's our savior and our judge. And in Jonah, Jesus is the risk prophet and the missionary sent to the ends of the earth. And in Micah, he's the ruler to the world from Bethlehem. In Nehum, he's our stronghold in the day of trouble. And in Habakkuk, Jesus is the watchman set on the tower. In Zephaniah, the Lord is mighty to save. In Haggai, he is our restorer, bringing revival. And in Zechariah, Jesus is the branch of David, the one pierced for our sakes. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, risen with healing on his wings. Let's go to Matthew. Behold the king of the Jews, the Messiah. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. In Mark is the servant and the healer. In Luke is a baby in the manger, the son of man. And in John is the way, truth, and life, the living word of God. 
and in Acts of the Apostles, he's our risen and ascended Savior into heaven. And he's the Savior of the whole world, even the Gentiles. In Romans, he's our justifier. And in 1 Corinthians, Jesus is the resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, he's our comfort. And in Galatians, he's our liberty. In him, we have freedom. And in Ephesians, he's the head of the church triumphant. In Philippians, Jesus is our joy, causing us to rejoice in every circumstance. And in Colossians, he's our completeness. In him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And then first and second Thessalonians, he's our coming king. In first and second Timothy, there's one mediator between man and God, the man Jesus. And in Titus, he's our blessed hope. In Philemon, he's our benefactor. In Hebrews, he's our perfection, the author and the finisher of our faith. In James, he is the power behind our faith. And in first and second Peter, Jesus, the bishop of our souls, the chief cornerstone. In first, second, and third John, Jesus is the truth and everlasting life. And in Jude, he is the firm and sure foundation of our faith, our security. In him we are safe. And in Revelations, lift up your heads, church. He is King of kings and he is Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But hold on, hold on. Why don't we roll back to the Gospel of John and see how the disciple whom Jesus loved presented him to us uniquely in every chapter of that book called John. In John chapter 1, he's presented as the Word of God made flesh. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. In chapter 2, Jesus is seen as the miracle water, turning water to wine, the great miracle worker indeed. And in John chapter 3, he is the great teacher, teaching the great Pharisee the way to eternal life. In John chapter 4, Jesus is the compassionate soul winner, seated by the, the well of Jacob in Samaria. And in John chapter 5, by the pool of Bethesda, we see the great physician Jesus take up thy bed and walk. And in John chapter 6, he is the bread of life. In John chapter 7, Jesus is the water of life. In John chapter 8, he is the defender of the weak. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. In John chapter 9, he is the light of the world. In John chapter 10, he is the good shepherd. And he is the door of the sheep. In John chapter 11, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In chapter 12, our Jesus is the king of the Jews, riding into Jerusalem on an ass. In John chapter 13, he assumes the place of a humble servant in washing the disciples' feet. And in John chapter 14, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the blessed consoler. In John chapter 15, he said, I am the true vine. Jesus is our true vine. In John chapter 16, he is the giver of the spirit. And in John chapter 17, we see the great intercessor making great and priestly intercession for our sake and in john chapter 18 he's the suffering messiah in john chapter 19 he is the uplifted messiah uplifted savior on calvary in john chapter 20 shout hallelujah he is the victor over sin and over death and over the grave he arose from the dead and in john chapter 21 he's the restorer of the broken even penitent peter our lord has always been victorious and will ever be victorious for even as a baby herod couldn't kill him the Pharisees couldn't confuse him as a teacher. The grave couldn't hold him back. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. Other religions of the world cannot replace him. And the leaders and governments and philosophers of this world cannot explain him away. His ways are right. His word is eternal. His will is unchanging. And his mind is on us, even me. He's my hope. He's my joy. He's my peace. He's my everything. He's my Lord and the ruler of my life. And can I hear the name? Shout his name. He's the son of the living God. Shout his name. Wow, that was really amazing. That was Thank wonderful. You, I and I believe you, I our viewers can do much better for him. They can do much better for him. You know, you know, Gideon, there is something about Jesus that each passing day, you get to know something new about Jesus that you would never Some think of. of mentioned I didn't even know. Me neither. I think we need to take up. We really more should. We really should. In the next five minutes, viewers, we are going to witness a beautiful display of artwork by a young gentleman who is going to give us a portrait painting using the gold dust method. Without much words, without much ado, let's welcome Gamshi on stage.
So far, those of you right here with us at our passport stadium and all over the globe, this is the impact morning show. And so the next thing that is the US is spoken word. So you might have encountered spoken word one way or the other, but I bet you today's own is going to be one of its kind. There's this young lady who has captured her spoken word, the 50 years faithful ministry of our father in the Lord, Pastor Doctor Dr. W. F. Kumi. Let us all bring a round of applause. Welcome. Mavis Akako. have flipped by like 50 days and we celebrate the golden jubilee in a special way of the ministry of a living legend of our time one of the greatest teachers of the bible the sacrifice in 1973 to date all began with 15 people who yearned more for the word of god and tangled in emptiness into adulthood when sin carved the ankles of their souls and they live in iniquity as in whole at the Bible studies back in the day, the truth was imparted in pure bay. The truth that was rejected like the fallen field neglected was resuscitated by a man with Christ-like identity who wore humility through simplicity, walk a stock according to his call, swimming against the tide, winning both respect and disdain, living in a world of wrath, others may, but he cannot. Now, with a digital addiction influencing the world negatively, young professionals, adults, children, and youth alike to find pleasure in pressure, to be measured as treasure, standing to preserve the legacy, to protect Christ to the world in ecstasy, remembering generations yet unborn as the injunction was given by the man. 
you and I changed by the dynamic philosopher from humanity to divinity, discharging the duty of the dispensation, from discovery to recovery, empowered to so high, far more than the ego can hide, filled with indescribable passion, ready on the mission to fulfill the heavenly vision. The vision is yet for an appointed time. And we haste to reach out to the lost souls, briskly redeeming the time because the days are evil. Knowing that the loving Lord took our place, making us beneficiaries of his death through grace, commissioned to preach the gospel to every creature and to all come to the knowledge of the rapture. Having been emancipated and eliminated from enmity, we run the race set before us in eternity, not to labor in prosperity or add thoughtless of prosperity, nor store in obscurity, neither run we in vanity nor birth in calamity. But we, empowered by Emmanuel, run the race set before us in eternity, made for the mastery, pondering the price, awaiting the supersonic flight, Christ being the surety for our death, never lag behind. And while we celebrate, let us keep it this way, that the best way to celebrate is to keep the part of faith, that which he has saved. Let us not forget the vision. Let us run with a mission, endlessly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Our Father in the Lord, we the youth want to thank you for giving yourself to the Lord. And we are here to learn from you and to preserve the legacy, faith of our fathers. Thank you. Wow, 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 that was wow. that was really awesome. That was, wow. you know, Gideon, something about spoken words that I really love. I believe they speak to the soul till they calm you. Yes. Yes. morning show and I believe you have been educated, entertained and above all impacted as we all have been. Once again my name is Christabel Lousu and I am Gideon Tay. Have a good morning. We leave you to enjoy the rest of the service. Have a nice day. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for how he is blessing us. God is good. And all the time. But I'm telling you, it is about to get better. Shout amen. And it's about to get bigger. Shout amen. And we will experience the biggest when our Father in the Lord mounts the pulpit. A bigger amen. We thank God so much for all the dignitaries who are gathered here today for this great program, including yourself. Time will not allow us to introduce every single dignitary in our midst, but we cannot miss the presence of Madame Cecilia Francis Eaton. She is a representative from the Nigeria High Commission in Ghana. Please give it up for her as we acknowledge her presence. God bless you, madam. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
we also cannot miss the presence of the Deputy Minister of Education in Ghana. He is our own. Reverend John Intim Fodjo. Hello, sir. You're welcome. In a minute or two, he will give us a word. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Can I hear a response? Praise the Lord. Impact. Impact. Thank you very much. I am deeply excited and blessed to be here at the Impact Academy. And I want to honor my father, our father, and our mother, the convener, pastor, Dr. and Mrs. W. F. Kumui. Let's honor our father and our mama for the great work over 50 years. The Lord has used them, the impact they have made across the world, bringing many to Christ and raising many. This morning, I have a simple message for you, my dear friends and youth. The tens of thousands in this stadium and the millions across the world. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 11 verse 3 that if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? In the amplified version it says that if the foundations of a godly society is destroyed, what can the righteous do? We as a youthful people we are the foundation of every country and every society. We are the youth of the church. We are the youth of Ghana, the youth of Nigeria, the youth of Africa, the youth of every country across the world. We are the foundations of society and the future leaders of the generations to come. But the attack of the enemy is on the youth because if the foundations are destroyed, if the youth is corrupted, if the youth is distracted from the fear of God, if the youth is distracted from the wisdom and direction of the Lord, then the future of mankind will be gloom. But I am here to share briefly with you the story of a very young man, a youth, just like you, who lived a very impactful life, Jesus Christ. Right from a young age, right up, up about 12 years, he started going about his father's business. At the time that he fulfilled his mission on earth, he was only about 33 years old. The same goes for the four Hebrew boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. At the time they were taken to Babylon, the Bible says that they were teenagers, they were very young people. But even though they were trained in the ways of the Babylonians, they stood to their godly principles. And they ensure that the foundation of the affair of God will not be corrupted. And so when in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 18 going, they were presented with the juiciest of the meats of the king. And they were presented with the wine of the king. They refused it and said that you can change our names. You have changed my name from Daniel to Bethesda. You have changed our names from Azariah from Michelle. And from Hananiah to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But one thing you cannot change is my godly principle. One thing you cannot change is my foundation in the Lord. Dear friends, I want to encourage you that you are the future generation. I want to urge you to stand for Christ in dignity and integrity. I want you to resist every temptation of corruption. I want you to resist every temptation of gratification of the flesh in the world today when the youth of the world and when the youth of many countries are rather craving after things of the world are rather craving after things that do not gratify god my dear friends may you choose to stand for christ may you choose to uphold your godly principles may you not be like the hophni and phinehas who even though were the heirs to the priesthood, even though they were next in line to become the priest of God, even though they were the hope for the generation to come, decided to be corrupted, decided to be promiscuous, decided to be corrupt, decided to covet 
decided to oppress the people, decided to do what was not befitting of a young man. I pray that the Lord shall raise an army of young people, an army of a youthful generation, young boys and girls, right from teenage age, who will stand firm in the word of the Lord, and who will hold high the integrity of the Lord, and will become the shining light in every society, the people that will love the peace of God and propagate same, the people that will become agents for the transformation of nations, the people the Lord will use to turn around our economic fortunes. May you be that person. May you be the Joshua and the Caleb's who will be at the forefront fighting us. The hand of the Father is lifted in battle for us. May you be the generation we can count on. May you be the generation that shall bring godly inventions. Godly inventions. If you come to this country, Ghana, and I'll be ending in a few seconds, there was a young man called Tetakwase who many years ago, in the year 1870, brought cocoa seedlings for the first time to this country. And now, cocoa is a major contributor of our growth and development. Cocoa is a major contributor to our GDP as a country. The basis of our economy is anchored strongly in cocoa production. This man was a young man. This man was in his 30s when he brought this good thing which has forever transformed the fortunes of this country. May you be a young man. May you be a young woman that will be remembered as the one that brought godly invention and introduced something new and great that turned around the fortunes of Africa and the fortunes of your country. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of this session. And I'm excited and blessed to be under the covering of our Father. God bless you. I thank you. Thank you, Reverend. God bless you. Considering how important this program is and the blessings that come from this program, there were a lot of proprietors who could not afford to watch on for their students to miss this program. They therefore allowed their students to be brought here in buses so they would experience the blessing of God. We want to acknowledge the efforts of these proprietors. Get Together Basic School, Dome. Dome M.A. Basic School, Paradise Basic School, St. John's Grammar SHS, Odogono SHS, School of Ashi, Temamanyan STS, Tema Vocational School, Great Ebenezer School Complex, Mape Presby, Presec Legon, Tema Secondary School, Sacred Heart Technical Institute, A&D Memorial Institute, Nungwa SHS, Unity Preparatory School, Ministry of Health Basic School, Winners Family JHS, Glorious Mount Sinai, in Latte, Action Basic and Pre School, Divine Leadership Academy, Jisam Pre University College, Sege Community JHS, Math Excellent Academy, Kotame JHS, Institute of Business Study, Adan Technical Institute, Christ Legacy at Kaswa. Let's give it up for all of these schools and God bless you so much for coming. God bless you so much for coming. Invite the choir. So we will take an introduction of our pastor before.
Bye. 